The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to Propaganda, the show where we find out what's been said about Leeds United. Dan, Michael, and Moscow. In the show that's brought to you with Levi Solicitors, there's that 10% discount on your legal fees. LeviSolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Second half, then, as promised, is where we go through what's been said by opposition fans. We're dealing now with the fallout from the Villa game, but mostly the Norwich game. Yay. All Norwich. Is it all honest. Norwich? Yeah, we don't need to hear from Villa fans, do we? Just in a sentence, tell us what you found when you listened to Villa fans. Did on. not listen to them. Great. <laughs> right, into <laughs> I, Norwich. I basically waited, <laughs> hoping we would beat Norwich, so I could then ignore Villa entirely and pretend it hadn't happened, because right. no one needs to hear um, laughing I think Brummies. sticking your head in the sand is the best way to deal with any crisis. Exactly. I thought, well, we've already going to potentially have a happy Dean Smith if they, if they get a result, so uh, there's just going to be just, too much. Just before we do get the clips, just Dean Smith. Check out his hair. He's got two haircuts as Dean Smith. I think I mentioned this on the show before. It's it's a weird kind of uh, the top of his head and the sides of his head. They don't match. It's two separate haircuts. <laughs> I'm just going to look at him now. Mm. It's like someone's taken two separate lots of Lego hair and spliced them together in in some sort of Frankenstein's monster kind of vibe. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's definitely short sides, but then it kind of it sort of t- it mushrooms out a bit at the yeah. top, doesn't it? Mm. Just have a look on your own time. Uh, you don't have to stop the show. Or you could do it. Maybe Google it while you're listening. Um, onto the clips then, and we're going straight into Norwich. Michael Bailey. We mentioned Michael Bailey, didn't we, on the um, on the match ball. Michael Bailey is the journalist who used to work for the Pinken, which is the uh, Norwich equivalent of the Yorkshire Evening Post. It's their sports paper. He then went to The Athletic. Great bunch of lads. Great bunch of lads. Great bunch of lads. So he's technically he's sort of, albeit some sort of colleague type, mm. is he? Well. Not of me. Not of you. Moscow. Yeah. What, do you think? what do you think of him? He, well, he was him of the uh, the Sonic Warfare, wasn't it? I just think of his tweet of February the 2nd, 2019. <laughs> sent from TweetDeck. Um this is ridiculous. He was at Elland Road uh, to set the context for uh, Norwich um, visiting Leeds. This is ridiculous. I've never witnessed anything like it. When Dia passed one, two, three into the box, then the PA blares out white noise and full volume. The white noise stops just after Casilla collects a distracted cross. Um, so he was convinced in the 35th minute where we were a goal down to Norwich City. Running psyops that we were deliberately playing um, like um, white noise through the PA and then obviously uh, ratio is what the kids say don't they it doesn't actually say how many replies there are on this but 49 quote tweets um, I think not necessarily saying yes good point Michael I think 30 of them might have been me (laughs) Uh, the the top reply I think it'll be obviously because I follow him um, Michael Normanton we had a scoreboard that didn't work for at least three years (laughs) Um, well, his, oh, uh, actually, there is a um, a Norwich fan who I, I won't put people's names in this, but she says, "Do they have any morals at all?" <laughs> Clutches pearls, and then yeah, everyone else never witnessed anything like it uh, with lots of cry laughing emojis. Um, somebody, uh, in fact, our good friend Joe Gamble, the excellent um, artist and uh, square ball contributor. Um, actually found his tweets from 2017, November 19, with exactly the same thing um, happening that he described as a... That's uh, all part of the um, part of the operation we were running. Get people to tweet about it from the exactly. past. Gives uh, gives plausible deniability, doesn't it? Like, like hacking say. into the Twitter servers, posting stuff in the past. Yeah, it's just like messing with your brain, isn't it? Gaslighting people, exactly. if you're like, yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, he, he's, he's, um, he, did, he, he kept going. <laughs> Apparently, it happens all the time up there, though. Right. Now the transfer window is closed, you might be able to find a couple of quid to sort the PA issues out. Um, anyway, it's Sunday now, and I think it's probably time you guys let this go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, sta- you started this, Michael. Yeah, and um, and that wasn't even his last word on it. Um, I mean, given this tweet factually describes what happened, and it was something I've not experienced at a match before. I'm doubling down. It's not my fault. It's your fault. This has got quite the reaction. It's your fault that I didn't know. I, you, didn't, I didn't bother looking into this, so it's your fault. You lot reacting to this are the ones who were all crazy. For the record, <laughs> I have tweeted about this since, and if you really want to keep getting wound up about it, that's up to you. And here we are, what are we, three years later? <laughs> <laughs> Never well, forgotten, Michael. Never well, forgotten. Well, well, Phil Hay says he's nice anyway. Yes, I'm he'll... sure he is nice, but I don't care. So, yeah. Fair enough. He's an idiot. <laughs> well, he's... Um, <laughs> you get nice idiots. His, his appreciation of the... Of <laughs> They're often the best kind. <laughs> of the technology. You know what a horrible idiot. They're, they're terrible. 
<laughs> he's doing that. He does these from inside the stadium. I've seen him do them, watched him do them a few times. <laughs> this is great. It's amazing. Can you hear him over the din? Well, I have what, to say that there was that, we mentioned on the match ball, there was a hum coming out of the PA system at Ellen Road. Mm. I, was, I was a little bit concerned that maybe, like I say, somebody had spilled some water on a cable or something like that. But what you can see from this video is the way that either the Wi Fi or the 4G or whatever it is at Ellen Road completely knackered, like the PA system, because he doesn't move for large parts of it and he's got a fully a block you know like um the video phones in the iraq war that kind of video quality that you got or that very early stage how was of it the from, iraq war for you from sort of satellites um it, it was not very successful as no. i remember and, and probably illegal <laughs> but let's not that's probably a different, probably a different podcast <laughs> <laughs> though well i mean he's into the sort of the kind of guantanamo bay uh sonic warfare stuff isn't he so if, if <laughs> maybe i don't know maybe all stick, him, stick him in an orange jumpsuit maybe yeah. it's all part of the conspiracy anyway anyway on the on the decisions actually just because uh we were talking about him he thought alien should have been sent off but he agreed with everything else yeah it was actually ridiculously reasonable yeah which is annoying but on the balance of play uh leeds had the better chances john Rowe did hit the crossbar late on but um rafinha hit the crossbar in the first half as well the underside of it um Leeds have the best chances and just on the whole balance of play, looking at that game and viewing it, I think I tweeted this, viewing it from the point that, you know, this is a team Norwich are competing with to try and stay up. This was the, basically the third team Norwich could try and beat to drag in and finish above. They just weren't really close enough to them in quality. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> the noise at the end actually is very it might trigger it might be a bit triggering <laughs> it's happening again <laughs> like the manchurian candidate where he's got that's it he's, he's gonna go off now with a pistol and uh anyway um next one the pinkin his his former uh employer and do you remember the fridge that american the, the american football the refrigerator yeah, yeah 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 this is this is dave freezer okay is it his cousin do we Possibly. need to explain that? Because anybody under the age of about 40 is not going to necessarily the, get that reference. The fridge was just a massive American footballer, wasn't he? He yeah. was like Big a, lad. a fridge. Not to be confused with it, because it was it was J Boris Johnson hid in a fridge, not yes. the same fridge. Yeah, and like an American style fridge, freezer fridge yeah. as well, not like a little one that goes under your, under your yeah. kitchen works. To so the best of our knowledge, Boris Johnson has never been inside the American football player, the refrigerator. Dave Freezer sounds a bit more like a DJ that you get like a harvester or something, doesn't it? <laughs> but sounds from DJ Dave Freezer. <laughs> Leeds deserved the points. Leeds played the better. Uh, Jesse Marsh's plans um, worked better than, than Dean Smith, um, frankly. And Norwich are, are now facing an absolutely miserable three weeks that we're all dreading, aren't we? And we all kind of know. Um, we all kind of know what's happening. And the one thing I would say with Leeds as well is that I think if Bielsa was still in charge, they'd have won this game because the first half is where it exemplified it. They they pressed Norwich so hard. They were so intense. Norwich just couldn't cope with them, really. And they, as I said earlier, they could have been 3 or 4 nil up and, and deservedly so. I like him. I say this with no disrespect to Jesse Marsh, but um, never mind Bielsa, we could have won that game with a golden retriever in charge, I think. <laughs> they were terrible. <laughs> it's interesting that they, their general depression about going down and their acceptance of it dj dave chills it did make it a little bit boring because most people were kind of just going yeah we're going back down yeah. how and, many games uh, have they won this season three, they, three i think well and drawn they have been promoted five oh, times since yeah. we were promoted they need to just give up and they've gone back down on the first occasion of four of those just stay down oh, they've, won stay, four, yeah. beg your pardon, they've won four games and drawn, drawn five lost 20 and i think so, their previous their previous full season in the premier league they won about five or six games as well didn't they so yeah. they are the only team with a worse goal difference than ours at minus 45 they absolutely piss the league every year as well it's weird they, they make getting out of the championship look really easy but then it's it's like they, they just completely lose their heads when they get to the premier league and completely fail to play football on to uh, the scrimmage yeah isn't that not a rugby thing i don't understand the name of it these things often have got sort of local folklore connections i have no yeah. idea it'll be the name of like a local river or something yeah, the, or the, <laughs> some sort of scrimmage. big 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 burning wicker man type yeah. thing yeah Whatever it's, 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 we, have, we have the scrimmage <laughs> every september <laughs> is, that not, is that not down in the southwest it's a similar accent i was trying yeah. i was trying to work out what the norwich accent is as well it's it is kind of farmery but then it's hundreds of miles from norwich is confusing to me because we we went for uh like a family holiday a little holiday park in in north norfolk alan, alan partridge territory mm. um and on a map it doesn't look anywhere near as far as it takes to get there like mm. you know I've, I've i don't think i've ever been to carrow road it's one of the few grounds i've not actually been to but i now understand why it's such a pain in the ass for everyone because we ended up 
doing an overnight stay like in a travel lodge in Boston in Lincolnshire mm-hmm. just to break the journey up because it was so bloody long Nor- to get there. Norwich are a bit like Carlisle, aren't they? In the every away game is just absolutely miles from yeah. from them. So, I mean, I'd have sympathy, but yeah. They did. I, I, you know, it took me absolutely ages to realise that the bottom t- I thought they brought a decent away following. Um, they didn't have the bottom tier. No, though. they didn't have the bottom tier. I realised when people were waving scarves in it that it was it was Leeds fans in there. But on the match ball, I was, I was being quite harsh on Josh Sargent, but Mark Rivers, who is a former Norwich player, I think was probably even harsher. And Josh Sargent, who, yeah, all right, we, we huffed and puffed again today. We, we saw him amazing he's, performance at Watford. I'm sorry, that is mate. It. I'm sorry, mate. He ain't good enough. He is not. He, I'm better than him now. I'm not. I'm not as being horrible because he doesn't prove. He doesn't provide anything. He doesn't provide any skill. He doesn't provide any quality. He's got no composure in front of goal. I mean, he, scored, he does seem to look for the easy ball all the time. Well, he scored a couple of goals against Watford. So what? Like. It, a sick squirrel finds a nut every now and again. You know what I mean? <laughs> One that's going to die. That's excellent. He does, he does provide physical comedy, I think, does Josh Sargent. Compared to a dying squirrel. <laughs> yeah, I love that he didn't just stop at uh, sick, but <laughs> let's take this all the way. And uh, uh, Mark Rivers' uh, goal-scoring record for Norwich, he played as a forward, 74 games, 10 goals. And even he... A classic one-in-seven striker. Even he is saying that he's uh, he's not good enough. Nigel uh, Worthington signed him. Oh, well. So uh, there you go. <laughs> Great lazy. He was, uh, he was seeking a pacey striker to partner <laughs> um, you and Roberts. The thing uh, is, uh, pace is all relative in Nigel say, Worthington's world. <laughs> anybody pacey compared to <laughs> Nigel Worthington. Good. I used to, I used to run backwards, I'm fairly sure, down the, the Leeds United touchline. Next one. Well, this is this is for B-Sotted. Take a note of the time. For this podcast, I've not right. I've not sadly timestamped the 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 Norwich um, what's it called this one the scrimmage I've not timestamped the scrimmage, mm-hmm. but you can do it on this one instead. So when you for when you need to tell people to listen, I know to what it. you mean yeah yeah because yeah. because obviously Brentford be sorted they knew exactly that it was thirty two minutes into the Brentford um, preview podcast. Yeah, that just have, they, a listen, have a listen. They, they got really really have a listen to this. Are you sure? Are, are you ready? It is embarrassing, Simon. You know, you, you, you're you privileged like us to, to watch Premier League games every week. I say privileged, I have to watch Norwich every week, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, Bre- Bre- Brentford, uh, a team, you know, that was where we really lost it last weekend, you know, losing that game at home to Brentford. But look at Brentford, you know, we finished way above them last season. I think it was 10 points, wasn't it? They they kept their best player, Ivan Tony. We didn't keep our best player, Emi Buendia. And Brentford are streets ahead of us now. A great win against Burnley yesterday. Probably didn't deserve it, but ground it out. And how can, how can we be saying as Norwich fans that oh look at Brentford though I wish we were them and that's a really sad state of affairs isn't it Simon (laughs) it is is this you basically trying to kick off the Bloods versus the Crips here Brentford versus Norwich it'd be such a a meek little battle (laughs) with this I mean even Norwich are are, are having a pop at Brentford here even Norwich (laughs) the most relegated side in the bloody world are going like you've got to be better than Brentford haven't we surely we deserve this and that's the great thing is no matter how good Brentford might ever get people still that (laughs) They can't, that can't happen. It's, no, they'll just get absolutely no respect from uh, anybody. There is a small good point in there, though, about why Norwich have failed so much and that difference of keeping your best player and selling your best player. And I do wonder if... They've still of, got Sam Byron? They have still got Sam Byron, but it's kind of the one, um, I guess, if we're looking for reasons Leeds have stayed up so far, um, not selling anybody has been probably... Maybe that is the, the crucial thing. Um Brentford didn't sell anyone. Who was up before Wolves when they came up? I mean, Wolves, all came, up, Chinese I was gonna say, Wolves came up with like a, an entire... Yes, yeah, so if you're not financial doping yeah. though, you've, you've kind of got to heavily invest as best you can, which I guess is what Leeds have done up to this point. Isn't but it, that's really? it, even like taken out of uh, what you might invest for new players, if you come up with the momentum of waltzing the league as we did and then Norwich did, but then you take out a big part of what helped you waltz the league, um, you're asking for trouble that way. We've been asking for different kind of trouble. Like buying players who aren't good enough instead of, <laughs> but at least we didn't get rid of the ones that we really, really needed. Oh, they're not happy, are they? Um, and good. At, at the end of the day, we just need three sets of fans to be unhappier than we are this season. Job well done. Welcome to the Premier League. Are you enjoying <laughs> yourselves? Come in. The water's lovely and warm. Anyway, wider world of propaganda then. We need to address the, the Steve Nichols stuff because we were told um, on the match ball, I mean, obviously you may, you may not realise this, but there's no planning or um, research goes into the match ball. It's just crazy shooting from the hip straight out of the stadium shit or straight after watching it on telly. Um, so we just sometimes say things that might not be true. That people have told us. We'll, yeah. re- we'll repeat anything. Yeah, we will. I mean, everything on YouTube is true. Oh, That's right. where you got it from, isn't it? It was a YouTube comment. 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's my fault, isn't it? Anyway, Steve Nichol was not on co-commentary on the international commentary. We were told by people it was Andy Walker. Mm. Um, for is he the former Bolton Celtic guy? Is he Andy Walker? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember him at all. He's just got one of those names, hasn't he? It's, it's a very, it's a very anonymous name. He's Andy Walker, yeah. and he's just a. A generic name of a good like a scaffolding, a good scaffolder. Just a, a generic close kind to of, the top, uh, of, close to the top of the yellow pages because he's an A. Andy Walker scaffolding. But he, yeah, he, uh, he is the former Motherwell Celtic, Newcastle Bolton Celtic, Sheffield United, Hibernian Wraith Rovers, Air Carlisle, Partick Thistle, Kill Winning Rangers, Isernia, and Alloa. Mm. Isernia are an Italian football club based in Isernia in Molise. Uh, in Serie D at the moment. Excellent. Thank I'd you. I'd never heard of them before, and I'd never heard of him. No, neither had I. Even though I'm, we, I presume we've watched him at some point, either playing for Bolton or Sheffield United. But the closest they've got is sharing a city back in the mid to late nineties. Then they might have been friends. Two Scotsmen in Sheffield mm. in the, the mid nineties. Him at Wednesday. Um, you know, Walker at uh, United. Sorry, Nickel at Wednesday. Yeah. So this is nineteen ninety six to nineteen ninety eight. They Nichols were Nickel's hand yeah. poking out of that pond. Yeah. As he's uh, as he's grasping. Well, <laughs> he's not actually. We've we've established he was. He was not wanting to be saved, probably. But, uh, yeah, not Steve Nickel, sadly. Yeah, Steve Nickel, big fans of him on this show due to his dour analysis on ESPN. Um, he was loving it this week, actually. The clips I did find, he was talking about the PSG game because he'd predicted that they would bottle it against Real Madrid, and they did. They did yeah. So he thinks he's absolutely the shit this week, which is, which is fair enough. It was a good call. Did he get a, a first flight to Paris so he could boo <laughs> Messi and Neymar with well, yeah. the rest of them? Money, money doesn't make you happy, does it? Look it doesn't. That. No, like you see that. like It was Messi setting up Neymar for that goal, wasn't it? And both players got booed in the process <laughs> of scoring yeah. for Paris Saint-Germain. So you think we're a bit harsh sometimes on the... Uh, on Leeds United, Christ, it's nothing on those lot of entitled that, babies. That wasn't even the hardcore fans because uh, the Paris Ultras had left at half time in protest right. already. Okay. At losing to Real Madrid. How dare we lose to Real Madrid in the Champions League? Football just makes idiots of everybody, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, us included. They also, the suffering we have to go through <laughs> every week watching Mbappe, Neymar, and Messi. Oh, woe is us. Yeah. Anyway, back to. I think uh, they're winning the league by about 12 points as well. Well, it's not good enough, is it? <laughs> But that, that doesn't make you happy. If you win it every year and you remove all the competition, mm. it becomes boring, doesn't it? Well, that, that whole, in fairness, that whole project set up over there is win the Champions League, which they are hilariously failing to do every year, yep. which is which is great. Yep. Imagine having those three players in your team. I don't care if, you know, Messi's getting on a bit and then being that bad. <laughs> it's great. Anyway, next. Burnley commentators. Right. Phil Bird is the main commentator here, but... Uh, this clip did do the rounds a bit on social media. This is them. This is how they sounded beating Spurs. Do you remember they did that a few weeks ago? Yeah, which we didn't like, did just, we? Just to set the context of this. Okay. It's over. Surely he's got to blow. Paul with the kick. He's blown. What a win. What a win for Burnley. They have been magnificent tonight. The header from me wins it. What a sensational night for Burnley. What a sensational night for Burnley. I'll tell you what, Sean Dyche could go to Paris and get a tune out of those players, couldn't he? <laughs> four, four, two. Get them organised. Get them do? running. What would he say? Four, four, fucking two, oh, lads. Right, and then... He'd a big man as well. He'd have... If they still got two promoting, he'd have him straight in the team, wouldn't he? He would insist as well on uh, calling Messi Lionel. <laughs> and it would sound like... Lionel. 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 I don't think Lionel, too many syllables. Leo. He'd keep it simple. Leo. Anyway... Phil Bird. A bit of contrast, is there? Yeah, they lost to Brentford this weekend. But bear in mind the, the rule, the, how much they're celebrating then. Not allowed to celebrate wins. No. I mean, they're celebrating here like they're, they're, they're staying it's, up. It's, it's like they've won the Champions League. You know, this, you know, this is not they could the go end. and lose eight on the spin here, couldn't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. This is not the end. No. You know, for mo most of that game, we dominated it. So they can bounce around all they like. They could still go down as well. Of course they could. Yeah, of course they could. <laughs> it's another, that's the real quiz, isn't it? <laughs> Gala in the background really yeah. makes that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to look at the table, Burnley got 21 points. But Brentford are nine points clear of them now. Yeah. It's fair enough to celebrate it. I know we, we do mock Brentford as much as we can on here, but... I mean, and they should be mocked for still playing Gala. Well, yeah, there is that. It's and a tune. It is, I mean, I know it's, it's got... A bop. It's got football connotations and all that, but still, it's just very Brentford, isn't it? I mean, we play Kaiser Chiefs at full time. Yeah, but I mean, at least there's whether you agree with that or disagree with it, there's some, there's some identity to the city there, isn't they there? They are from, like, yeah. yeah. Where's, where's Gala from? Is she Italian? Uh, I think it was an Italian song, yeah. She may be a fan of the uh, team that um, Andy Walker played for. That would be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would, yes. 
Uh, I didn't put any Warnock clips in, but I did just find him talking on the radio. It's, it's a very short quiz for you, Moscow. Mm-hmm. The question was, which Premier League manager, past or present, would you like to be stuck in a lift with? Would Neil Warnock like to be stuck in a lift? Former Leeds yes. United manager, Neil Warnock. Who would he like to be Who stuck in Who would he lift? like to be stuck past in a lift? Past or present? Well, I mean, uh, Josie, he always... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really? Yep. <laughs> uh, I think it's more that he'd, uh, he'd like to be stuck in a lift with me, because uh, <laughs> oh, we used to, we used to get really go on. Ball. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so predictable. Right, um, we've saved a nice uh, wedge of time here for the end of the show to talk about Jake Humphrey um, mm. for the benefit of anybody who doesn't know who Jake Humphrey is Jake Humphrey congratulations he presents sorry we're about to ruin your life first of all he's a Norwich he's a Norwich fan mm-hmm. second of all so he presents like the Champions League coverage on BT Sports previously he did um, the Formula One for the BBC didn't he he was in the pit lane uh, how would you best describe his face <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to incite violence no. on this on this podcast, do we? No. Uh, he, but he's just got one of those faces. He's got one of those faces. Mm. Let's let's phrase it um, as uh, that. And he recently posted about his. He's got a, a podcast out, hasn't he? Um, niche format. It was described as uh, back to him in, way back when in 2020, when he came up with this idea about wanting to speak to world class performers and launching a podcast. And it turns out in the subsequent tweets, realised he was told his parents. His parents said it's too niche, Jake. It's too niche. It won't work. And Jake Humphrey, with his national television platform... My 80-year-old parents yeah. said podcasts were not not something they were particularly interested in. Um, and so he's got a, hu- a huge budget production company, his TV salary, all to back this. Um, I've no idea how he made this mm. podcast a success. He's not. really grafted that. Yeah, he? and this was all framed around a picture of uh, the O2, which is the former Millennium Dome in London, when they put the roof back on after the recent storms. Um, he said, and look, we've sold. This is my sellout O2 concert. It was like one of the smaller theatre rooms. It's like 2,000 something capacity. So he's done, he's done well. But given that, you know, the budget and everything behind it, let's be fair, Jake, it's no surprise that he's made a success of this. I mean, we've only been podcasting for 12 years now, just mm. just the 12. And really, we were nothing before Jake, were we? Before he mm. got his claws into no. this. He's really popularised the format. Yeah. So we owe you a debt of thanks, Jake. But we also need to mention you because you're a Norwich fan. I think Apple should also be thanking him for the increased sales of iPods. Because mm. that, that was really uh, struggling along. Um, and in the and wake, so he came along. And in the, in the, wake, in the wake of that tweet, um, Guardian journalist Barry Glenn Denning, who has been blocked by Jake Humphrey, I should add. I don't think they get along, do they? He was he was digging him out quite a lot. Um, I mean, Glenn Denning does he does go on some slightly, I think, booze fueled um, <laughs> tw- tw- late night runs, Twitter sessions, which sometimes are a bit misplaced. Or he's he's very obviously just trying to wind people up. He's a good he's a good and he's a professional antagonist, isn't he? This yeah. was brilliant. Yeah, it, it really was, and well deserved. Mm. But Jake, uh, you've listened to a little bit of his podcasting efforts. Mm. No, this isn't even a podcast. This is this that might I think this might actually predate his podcast. Right. But this is the kind of the before times as they're known. This is like the motivational stuff he's doing. I mean my my former job I used to work at ITV and we'd have like what did you do at ITV apart from um doing stuff for the square ball? Uh it was mainly that, <laughs> to right. be perfectly honest. Uh, uh, it was advertising selling stuff and did you get sent, managing accounts. Did you stuff. get sent on courses, training courses where you had to learn like inspirational leadership and shit like that they tended not to send me on them for like the last five years i was there because <laughs> they knew because they knew i was they knew i was resistant to that sort of thing there was there was a residential course you could do. Well, you resistant there was a residential course you could do with it was called upping your elvis he's oh, on for god's sake in the bloke it, he's um he's kind of a former military public school boy he said it talks like this yeah you know, come on guys yeah you gotta the reason it's called that is because what elvis sounded like when i go into a building i'll say who's elvis here if it, so he's in the bog. It, yeah, it, he's just. A, and, we still go in there with a lot of hamburgers. We don't think he's all right. <laughs> An unbearable twat, anyway. And so he used to, he used him and other people like him used to pop along to sort of sales conferences and give yeah. you uplifting speeches. So I've seen and heard people like Jake Humphrey many, many times who will tell you. And at the end of the day, you're thinking, well, they're like, what do you really want from life? And stuff they're telling you. You to show up, and you'd think, yeah. <laughs> Ideally, there's a free bar in about an hour once you once you sh- get once you get the fuck out of here, um, and ideally, probably like to do a job that's not selling, um, like a loose women's well, sponsorship. I so. mean, that leads us very nicely into what Jake has got to say. So yeah. it, you would be, I think, clip one is actually perfect for the mm. position you were in. <laughs> this morning, I asked on my Instagram, "Who is really, really pushing themselves to their limits?" 
75% of people, 75%, that's hundreds of replies, 75% message to say they don't think they're doing enough. And this comes from a motto that I live by. You probably noticed I've got a few. And one of them is never sit in the comfy chair. Now that came from a boss of mine. I was at Rapture TV in Norwich. I would have been 21 years old, something like that. I'd failed my A-levels, got a job in telly in Norwich. I was earning four or five grand a year, would you believe? And I was working for this tiny TV channel. And I decided to leave because I wanted to see whether I could cut it in London. And I didn't have a job to go to and I didn't have anywhere to live, and I didn't really know what I was gonna do, but I decided to leave. And everyone at this place was saying to me, you can't leave because you've got nowhere to go. And then one guy, a man I will not forget, his name was Adam, he said to me, if I can give you one bit of advice for your life, never sit in the comfy chair. Well, I don't know about you, I'm feeling inspired. Have you noticed, um, he does that thing that, you know when we've watched the live watch-alongs of football fans, like um, commentating on the games that they're watching? they will repeat things to fill the time like that's a foul that's a foul that is a foul and jake's just done that with that 75 percent thing did you realize he went mm. and i put it out to my instagram and 75 percent of people 75 percent. well it's a shocking number this is mm. it. he's trying to shock people into yeah. realizing what's what's going on hundreds of hundreds of respondents 75 mm. percent. and i've now thought of the next point i'm going to make so i'll say it if it's um repetition that you're after i think the next um, clip maybe two clips. I'm not. I'm still not ruling out the possibility that at that first job, he was sat literally in a comfy chair that was his boss's, <laughs> and he was like, "Don't fucking sit in the comfy chair, Jake. <laughs> get yeah. out. That's my chair. That's my chair. I like sitting in my lunch hour. Get the fuck out." Boss walks into his office and, and any... find, finds Jake sat in his office with his feet up on the table. I'm just imagining what it's like to be you. get out. <laughs> I like the bit as well. He goes, I was like, four or five grand a year. If you can believe that. Because yeah. like, obviously now I'm, I'm, I'm pretty successful now. Like that's, that's a good lunch these what's, days. What's uh, that's, that's 600 quid a month tops, isn't it? Mm. I want to know um, what rent he was paying at his parents, how much they subsidised him when he was doing his first job in telly. Because that's, it's like those articles about I bought my first house and saved up there mm. in the paper. And it's always within the first couple of sentences you find out how much the parents have given as a deposit or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I lived at home for four years and my grandma died and left me £50,000. He's like, oh, okay. I think it's the start of the next clip is relevant for that. So his early life off of Wikipedia, his, his parentage and, you know, people's back uh, upbringings are what they are, but he's from Peterborough. Um, the son of a retired teacher and a retired chief exec of Age Concern. So probably pretty comfortable if teacher and a chief exec, fine. Um, yeah, and I think it's the start of this clip where he talks about his uh, his early journey. But he, he went to London, he had nowhere to go. Got on the, got, hear, what, hear what happens got, to him, Michael. Got on the train. Hear what a happens bag to him. Over his did, did, he have, did he have one of those little bags on a stick like a... No uh, doubt slept under a, under a railway line for, for months <laughs> under on Under a end. railway line? <laughs> <laughs> a bridge, maybe. Yeah, I got you. Bridge would be cool. And in their words, we don't employ people like you. So I decided not to sit in the comfy chair, and I found another route in to working at BBC Sport, and they were incredibly supportive, and it was some of the best times of my career. I was not sitting in the comfy chair when I stood in the pit lane in Australia in 2009 and went live on the television when every single fibre of my body was telling me that I was out of my depth and there's no way that I could do it. And then I was working on the Formula One and an offer came in from BT Sport and I decided not to sit in the comfy chair. I decided to go to BT Sport. And that was not me sitting in the comfy chair. I then decided to leave London when the whole of the TV industry exists in London and we came back to Norfolk because this was not sitting in the comfy chair. And I really want you to think right now, what about the comfy chair do you like too much? What is stopping you from going to a really uncomfortable chair? I like a comfy chair better than an uncomfortable one. And you know what? You know, it's the start that we said people like you. We don't employ people like you. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Middle class white <laughs> lads who were born to a retired teacher and a chief exec. The BBC employs lots of people exactly like that. So what else apart from what, what was it what about Jake Humphrey? Your, your white middle class upbringing like, that meant you couldn't get a when job. When they say people like you, what is it about people like Jake Humphrey that they didn't like? And I think it's more of a him problem than yeah. than I think anybody it's, else. It's not. It's not the win that he thinks that is, is it? It's part of him wearing his lack of qualifications as a badge of honour as well, because he yeah. does, he, I've seen him do this as well. He, he does it always around results time. He goes like, "Oh well, I didn't get any A levels, but look at me." But probably 
he failed them mm. when he shouldn't have done. According to Wikipedia, he was sacked from McDonald's when he was 16 as well. So all these setbacks really are just down to him being useless. The, did he remove all the comfy chairs? <laughs> <laughs> I like to think it was uh, former League United director uh, David, David Haig, yeah. who sacked him as a teenage year old sacking sixteen year old. I see this the other way now as well because my motto now is if if you get in a pub and you get a seat, get the comfy. Don't chair. leave the pub. Yeah. You know, if someone mm. says, "Oh, should we go somewhere else?" and you'd be like, "Well, I'm in the comfy chair." But we've got yeah. we've kind of got a corner table. It's nice here. It's not taking too long to get served. Let's let's stay here. Let's yeah. stay we, where we it's could, comfy. We could go into a, a, a pub where we're having, having to lean against the bar. There's loud music on. I'm sat down here. I can hear you talk. Uh, we can get table service. Mm. This chair's re- comfy chair. This is it. It kind of comes to because the, the, there's more of this to come. Unfortunately, <laughs> so I'm kind of saving some of it because the, the what comes is worse. But the, there are people who are probably not the intended audience for this. But there are a lot of people struggling to make ends meet, going to food banks, can't get a job, can't do this, can't would just give anything for 30 seconds in a comfy chair yes. just to sit down and get a break from everything that is making their lives incredibly difficult whether it's even you know we're kind of worried about things here but if you go to other parts of the world where you know your, your chair has basically been bombed to bits by somebody that's absolutely out of your control and then hearing those people this are just, those people are just not trying enough Moscow. yeah they're not well, positive they're Moscow. not working hard enough moscow listen hey I had a one. I had my awful TV job where I had to stand yeah. in the freaking pit lane, and I suffered a bit from imposter syndrome. Can you imagine how I've suffered in this world? And then BT offered me a much better job, and do you know yeah. what? I took it. Mm. And then I <laughs> realised I had the resources that I didn't have to work in London anymore, but I could start my own production company in East Anglia. How so I've, I went and did that as well. How, and I, how I've dragged myself out of I've, the gutter. And I realised it's audience, and he's not. He's not. You know, speaking to people in war-torn countries, and he's not even speaking to people in. You know, who were not working in media jobs but it's kind of <laughs> he's off, just no, a little he's off. a little bit of awareness that it's that you know there are all people all a lot of people want all anybody wants what's wrong with a, a, a comfy chair would be lovely <laughs> wouldn't it like all and it's, it gets worse so i'm trying to save it for the <laughs> the worst parts but really what more do people actually want out of life than just a comfy chair to sit in something to eat somewhere to sleep a nice house and everything's fine <laughs> but then you've got fucking jake going no you've got to go and do something else now but play the next whatever <laughs> because if you carry on doing the usual then you will only be settling for the usual it's time to do the unusual i really want you to think about this i want you to take a chance i want you to go out of your comfort zone completely change your thinking about taking a risk and taking a chance okay just think of it as having an adventure I bet 90% of the people watching this can take a big risk, t- can take a big chance, and if it doesn't work out within six months, they can be back to where they are today. No, well, I've got no good, they can't. I've got a good point on this, Moscow. My uh, my energy bills are about to go up from about 80 quid a month to about 160. They're probably going to double. So I'm thinking I might have an adventure. I might take a risk over the next six Just months. Bang the central heating right yeah. off. Crank up the heating, open the fucking windows, <laughs> not pay my bills, see what happens. Get chance. out that comfy chair. Within six months, you're probably back to where you were anyway. Anyway, apart from uh, the financial ruin and obviously uh, probably debtors' prison, which you might be, might be all be reintroduced. It's, the six month thing is really really important when you listen to the next clip where right. he is he is listing the things. Bear in mind, he says you can take a risk because within six months you can be back to where you were anyway. So right. so really, what does it matter? Well, just to draw on my own experience from this, I got made redundant from my job. Uh, it was the back end of was it twenty nineteen. My job finished, so. I had to take a risk and do this had this not worked out within six months i would have still been made redundant but with no money (laughs) Um, well you need well he's making a good point then because you you got out of the comfy chair and you got into the (laughs) office chair here so but i think that i mean that's that's okay because you had you didn't really have a choice your job was being taken away he's talking about quitting and and so what he says here is some of the worst life advice (laughs) imaginable it doesn't need any more build up than that but apart from just to say listen to the things jake humphrey is about to suggest that you should do just because life has got a little bit too comfortable and do not do any of these things for that reason i I mean i could be a jake a jake humphrey's hero here because i did quit my job to do this you did yeah but if i'm perfectly honest about it i was kind of ready to quit leave that job anyway yeah i wanted to do this 
But I mean, the bastards wouldn't even make this, you redundant, would they? They wouldn't. I really tried. You did try. <laughs> but cru- <laughs> crucially, the real crucial aspect of this is I own a house. I don't have a very big mortgage. My wife works. I knew things would be fine for six months. That's That's... For me, things were going to be fine for six months. And if I needed to get a proper job, I'd get a proper job again. It's not good advice for everyone. <laughs> Do not fucking listen to Jake yeah, Humphrey. Jake is about to make a lot of suggestions that are, that go long, far beyond changing your career. <laughs> I, love how, I love how angry you are. So why don't you go for it? Just whatever it is, moving to a foreign country, changing jobs, breaking up with your partner, asking that person in the office who you've always been in love with whether you can go on a date, having children. Like, there's never a good time to have kids, and that is not sitting in the comfy chair. But you know what? Just go for it. Whatever it is, whatever you haven't been doing, it's time to do it. Give it a go. Give it a go and fail is better than not giving it a go at all. So I'm sort of challenging you with this video. I'm basically saying, what do you really, really want out of life? Really want? And why have you not gone to get it? Why have 75 people said to me on Instagram today that they're not giving it their all? How do we evolve? How do we, how do we break new frontiers, find new drugs to treat illnesses, visit countries we've never been to before? unless there were people at that time who were willing to take a risk, willing to push the boundaries. This is it, this is the moment. Make this video the moment that you go, right, I'm taking a risk, I'm gonna go and do this. Yes, Jake. I'll leave you with the words of Nelson Mandela. Oh, come on, Jake. Some things seem impossible. (laughs) Done. A production company in Norwich seemed impossible (laughs) until it was done. We would never have had penicillin if it or, wasn't for Jake you know electricity if people hadn't taken that risk split up with their long term spouse had a baby with their boss's wife just all of that stuff and what you should do is have children with somebody at the office that you've fancied for years it doesn't matter about your home life and then fail anyway because it doesn't matter it's just a baby it's fine you can give it back after six months and you've only ruined the lives it's, of, within, it's within the warranty within you've, only, you've only, <laughs> only ruined only ruined the life you had with your old family with your spouse and any kids there the the, the life of the family of whoever's uh, spouse you've stolen to have those children with ruins probably the entire company has fallen apart because everybody's fighting <laughs> over you breaking up your marriage to go and ask somebody else out but you know what if we don't take those risks well i'm 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 team jake and i I like how he he drew an equivalence between his production company in norfolk Mm. and the discovery of penicillin Mm. um but you know i'm going to follow some of his advice now because i think it's good sound advice you know about um the person in the office that that you've always wanted to tell that you love and you know splitting up with your partner maybe going to a foreign country so michael um Mm. I know it's probably not the easiest time to do this live on the recording, but uh, I am thinking about leaving my wife, mm-hmm. and it's because of you. Fine. Um, well, it's because of Jake. Well, Jake's inspired me to tell you how I feel about you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like us to go run away together, mm-hmm. start a new life. Mm-hmm. Um, Saudi Arabia sound all right? Yes. We'll, we'll go get on the old pro. Keep it risky. Yeah, it, yeah, I like danger in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not been in the comfy chair. Um, I'm following exactly, Jake. Yeah, 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 I think it's going to be quite an uncomfortable chair for a, a, a homosexual couple in you'd, Saudi Arabia, be, isn't it? You'd be tied to it, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this is I mean, <laughs> this is that not a no? <laughs> I'll, I'll think about it. It's, it sounds too uncomfortable a chair yeah. for, for my personal taste. Right. Okay. It does genuinely make me angry. This stuff. <laughs> this I, I've not realised the extent. Like one of the things Barry Glendening calls him is Jake oil for snake oil, um, and this stuff. This this is the fucking sales pitch of an absolute. <laughs> it's when he says seventy five percent of people, seventy five percent of people on his Instagram say we don't we don't feel like we're doing enough in our lives. I will guarantee you that one hundred percent of that seventy five percent of people who feel like they're not doing enough in their lives would feel like they were doing enough in their lives because they are if they unfollowed Jake Humphrey on Instagram, who every fucking day is telling them, you're in a comfy chair, you're not doing enough in your life, why don't you take a risk? Why don't you do this? Why, why don't you do every- that? Everyone should present on BT Spot. Every- <laughs> Probably. And I- if you're not, you're not thinking there's, there's positively should, enough. If there's just more, not enough, there should be more jobs there, if yeah. you wanted there to be. And because if, if ever 
100% of the people on Jake Humphrey's Instagram all go, actually, yeah, we're, we're pretty happy. His business selling this shit is ruined because nobody's going to pay him to come and tell them that their life is a fucking failure. <laughs> it's what it was his entire, he's built all this around. Those 75% of people don't need this guy telling them <laughs> that they're not doing enough about, in their lives. What about the new drugs? And I, how will they ever develop if Jake isn't there with his with his admittedly no A levels that he's going to be making just in a lab? Whoa! Just take a risk. Someone drink this. It might it might it might cure cancer. Who knows? Oh no, you're dead. Brilliant. I mean, I don't think that new drugs are created by taking risks. I think it's done with really diligent scientific work mm. where they'll try loads of different stuff really methodically, and then yeah, I don't think it's got anything to do with belief because the only thing that does have a huge amount to do with belief as Moscow says, is selling this kind of shit because this is exactly what this entire industry is, is built around is that you can come in and you can you can pretend that just telling people something is going to make a difference and it actually doesn't. Well, and you first have to make them feel <laughs> inadequate, mm. which is what it all is. And like, you, yeah, you, you tell people, first of all, this is your fault, mm -hmm. but you've got it in, you have it within you to change. I mean, especially, I mean, I don't know when this was, when this was first come out but you know we've had however many years of pandemic that everybody's either been ill with or worried about and now you know the impending war we are mercifully far enough away from it that we're not in immediate danger but it is a concern i don't think anybody is not under stress and doesn't i don't think anybody needs to fucking hear this smug fucking bastard <laughs> Telling people, I think you could try a little bit harder, couldn't you? I think you're a little bit too comfortable. No, who is comfortable? Just go and have who? some kids. Moscow, you've not got any kids. Go have some. Yeah, just fucking have some. Just go Doesn't have matter, some. does well, it? Pick somebody. Who? And go and have some. Just go and ask people on the street. Ask if, ask if they want to have a baby with always you. Go, you. You look a little bit too comfortable. <laughs> always goes down well, that. Uh, if it? anyone's watching wants a baby with Moscow, he's up for it. He's, yeah. he, he needs to. I, well, even if he says he's not. I'd be a willing carrier, but he na needs nature to, means I can't. He so. needs to get yeah. out of his car. You should have another. And get divorced. <laughs> life life is hard enough without wankers like this coming around and telling you that you're doing a shit job of it. Um, Everyone, you're all doing fine. I think. You're allowed to be unhappy. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, you are allowed to be unhappy. You're That's allowed, Leeds fans. And it's not just about unhappy. You're allowed to just, if you've got to the point where you actually have a comfy chair and things are cool, everything's fine. Mm. It's That's okay. Yeah. You don't have to burn that down just because some fucking this guy, and I can see him on the... <laughs> screen in front of me what, so, so the I thinks that you should be trying a bit harder the picture you, of N nelson mandela is ashamed of you he, he got out of jail through thinking and trying harder yeah i mean <laughs> to liken to liken him getting a job um at bt sports in nelson mandela's plight is insulting in the extreme that's the other thing i mean it's, it, these things maybe do help some people i don't know but if the image i've put on here of him is him looking quizzical i would say and smug but the trying to look interesting bear in mind this is one graphic but it manages to fit in the very limited text on there feel better live more world-class habits meaningless fucking words yeah. they are they that means nothing at all i don't think anybody is helped by this especially not and it comes back to the podcast thing as well where um you know you've got, you've 10, got a headache you've got <laughs> you've got like 15 i can't remember when podcasts really started like because it was long before we it was mid it. mid 2000s so like 15 yeah. years of people taking a risk doing all that stuff working really hard to make that a success and then jake humphrey comes along and says well that was all irrelevant because i've started doing it now and i've invented it and so I'm taking all the risks to start podcasts. And so I think it's just made, another example of him making, point. <laughs> making everybody feel <laughs> worthless about the things that they've done that they can be proud of about working hard to get a comfy chair. And then he comes along and fucking <laughs> kicks a, a leg off it and says, well, that's not good enough because <laughs> I I've didn't done, do it. I so, didn't, yeah, basically. And, the sheer, and you didn't do it the way I would have done it. And the sheer fucking insult dished out to a huge number of jobs as well. Like people who are just, who, who are, if you are a nurse or a bin man, jobs that fucking need doing. In your comfy chair. Unlike your shit job, Jake, which if you didn't do, the, the game would just play and you wouldn't, yeah. we wouldn't have you talking over it, which would be a fucking how, blessing. How long have you been nursing? <laughs> How long have you been nursing? Why well, don't you do something better? I've been I've been nursing for forty years. I've been a, a midwife. I've Rubbish. Brought, brought people. Where's your like? Where's your ambition? Yeah, exactly. What's this? You've brought thousands of children into this world, <laughs> helped people in the worst times of their life. 
for not much recompense. But, Where was your lack of? You should be running that hospital. I've got four cars. <laughs> Uh, do you know, and do you know what? They're not even in London. Do you, do, you know, do, you know, do you know how many bedrooms I've got? Eight. <laughs> One of them's and a and a, a basement with a pool in. Yeah, yeah. Um, Makes your job look pretty fucking stupid, doesn't it? I Toiling think, away teaching those fucking snotty kids. I think we've made, you've wasted your life, I think people. I think we've made the point, don't you? I think we've we've, re- we've reinforced the point. I feel like um, like. Moscow's so, ready to go out and form some world class habits. So just, <laughs> so just to go back to where we started on this, when I started talking about Jake Humphrey quite some time ago, mm. now when you see that photo, what do you think? <laughs> I, I think um, I think you should listen to this, and I'd like to hear his opinions. Yeah, because you know podcasting, it's all about give and take. Isn't I'm it? sure he'd welcome yeah. feedback. Um, so our world class habit would be to say, let us know what you think, Jake. Funky feedback, as someone um, in one of those aforementioned. ITV sessions was there anything, referred to it was as there anything funky about it I, I think I said it was rubbish <laughs> <laughs> I do remember feeling that I did check it was anonymous first but you had to give <laughs> occasionally you'd have to give feedback on various speakers through, through, throughout the day and on one of them I did just put this is like the the most hollow shit I've ever heard the company I used to work for there was that there was an anonymous survey went around everybody um, and I still didn't trust that it was anonymous. <laughs> well, I did because it was a Google form and we had a, a Gmail system. So I did it. On, I did it on my phone while on an incognito window in a, in a way to try and just in case there was a way of tracing it. I mean, although it was me because the people would have seen my face during it all as well, which probably would have been a bit of a giveaway. And only five of you in the room. <laughs> yeah. You were. Uh, you know, he's turned this into a book. Oh, super! So there is a book, High Performance Lessons from the Best on Becoming the Best by. Jake Humphrey and Prof Damien Hughes. It's got some uh, blurbs. Um, when he says from the best, does he mean himself? Probably. This amazing book will teach you the mindset and habits of champions. High performance has already impacted some of the best players and coaches across the world, but Jake and Damien's insights are equally valuable to people from any walk of life. I urge you to open this book and open your mind to the lessons within. You know who said that? Jake Humphrey. Jake Humphrey. No, no. Professor, what's his? No, no, no. Nelson Mandela. It's an independent uh, viewpoints from a, a, a very happy Frank reader. Frank Lampard. Got Is it, it actually? Yeah. That's Frank Lampard. <laughs> also on the, uh, the the cast of Shame, Fern Cotton says it's good. Uh, mm-hmm. Tracy Neville. Um, then Sir Clive Woodward. So there we go. But Dick, yeah, if Dick you want to, dickheads, every one of them. If you want to pay, uh, Frank Lampard and him are very. They are. They can see they'd be good mates actually. Well, he always goes into bat for Lampard, doesn't he? They're like when it comes to like Chelsea's record and stuff. I, he's try, not to, I try not to watch him because he's unbearable. Yeah, he's always like you know. Let's just say Frank did this and Frank. Oh, fuck off. So if you want to pay ten quid to have somebody to tell you that you're not good enough, so there's the book is available. <laughs> and let's end this Frank show. We, we have gone really long on this one, but just let's just to look see how much it cost him for a speaking appearance. We let, can book him to speak. Let's Get just, him in here. Let's just book say him throw stuff at him. Let's just say <laughs> if you're still alive, you are good enough. Fine. Yeah. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Crack on. Just crack on. And keep going. Yeah. Ignore this <laughs> if you're in a comfy chair enjoy it yeah exactly you've done well to get in there it's comfy yes. for a reason it's not coming for for free has it that comfy chair exactly enjoy the comfy chair we'll see you in a bit the square ball podcast